The Trojans have had many ups and downs through the first half of their season, and here with me to pick out a few of those is Paolo Ugetti. Thank you for joining me, Paolo. Thanks for having me, Alexa. USC got off to a slow start offensively, scoring only 16 points in their first two games against Power 5 opponents. How have they progressed from then until now? Well, I think with the offense, to, to look at how they progressed from the start of the season to now, it's a little give and take. Obviously, they started off with Max Brown, and that did not bode so well. Obviously, that was a bit of the schedule as well, playing Alabama and playing Stanford, two teams that at that point were very highly ranked and looked really strong. But I think that the progression has been obviously because of the effect of putting Sam Darnold in there. And that's what it's a little bit about because you wonder if Sam Darnold were, have been the start, would have been the starter from the beginning had the offense been able to do this, uh, produce this kind of uh, scoring and this kind of production from the beginning. And so it, it's a little bittersweet with the, with the USC offense, you know. You, you look at what Max Brown did and you say, you know, it's not all his fault. The offense was faltering a little bit, but the offense was built more for Darnold. And the past few games have shown that even though they have been against lesser opponents. I mean, he's been able to wake up Juju Smith-Schuster and get him back to being one of the top receivers in the country while also involving the tight ends and really spreading the ball around. Hmm, that's great. And while the offense has taken some time to develop, the defense has maintained strong all season. So what makes the defense so effective? Well, I think with the defense, you have to, you have to look at them not as a – Possibly this one of the strongest differences in the com in the conference or in the nation, but they've just been really consistent. You know, they've allowed the offense to, if they are faltering, to stay in the game. They've been really good on third down conversions, limiting their opponents, and just you know, there's not really a huge standout guy like there is in Juju and Darnold in the offense, but they all they've all been pretty consistent and really limiting the opponents to to big plays. Aside from the first from the first games against Alabama and Stanford, so they've really come a long way as well. I think and. Together, they've been able to kind of create these games where both the offense and the defense are playing in rhythm and playing successfully, and that's been why USC is on a winning streak now. And no team is complete without special teams, and we obviously touched on offense and defense, but the special teams have been exactly that, special. So how has John Baxter revitalized special teams? Well, it's all about his technique and his fundamentals. You see him out there in practice, he's always – you know, focusing on the little things that really are going to add up to the to, to the end goal, which to him is just winning the game. He's affected the entire team, and especially the special teams. I mean, you see here, they've jumped on ev almost every statistical ranking from, from when last year when they didn't really have a specific special teams coach. And now you have guys all over the field making plays on kickoff returns. You have Adoree Jackson, obviously, who's playing out of his mind every time. He, you know, he's, he's on a punt return or a kickoff return. There's always a chance that he could return it all the way back to the touchdown. So the special teams as a whole has been kind of the – the cherry on top of you say of the USC team in the past few games, how they've been able to find this this winning streak, and it's largely been because the special teams has been consistent as well. So they're this is great. So is there anything that's stopping them? Uh, well, it doesn't look like there is now, especially with the second half of their season um, being against teams that are maybe were thought to be much better at the start of the season, but now they're not. But I think that the thing that really looms over this whole team right now is that loss at Utah, and I think that this whole midseason recap, you know. It's good that they've been progressing both on offense, defense, and special teams. But because of that close loss at Utah late in that game, a lot of this does not matter. You know, they they in the Pac-12 South, they're still behind a, a few games, so they're going to need help from Utah and uh, and Colorado to lose some games. And they they can't mess up from from here on out. They have to be perfect. And it's it's still a tough schedule with Washington there. So there, it'll be interesting to see how much this Utah game com comes back to affect them, despite their improvement. Well, thank you so much, Paolo. The Trojans will try and keep their conference hot streak alive when they take on Cal tomorrow at 730.